Well, most importantly, it, it, it brings, the, of course, the efficient use of, of resources of all angles, everything from pesticides to herbicides to sometimes if it's, the, if it's a different form of precision ag where you can farm sometimes with minimum use of those or with no use of them, uh, precision applications for all kinds of fertilizers so that you not only are efficiently producing a crop the best way possible for food and or fiber or for ethanol or whatever we want for energy, but you're also combining in that a minimum impact on the environment. So we've now moved into the arena where precision ag is as much about the environment we're operating in as it is about uh, the efficient use of uh, production technologies. I think you'll probably see the word actually um, uh, morph into not even being used anymore because nobody in that's going to be doing it in any scale is going to be doing anything but precision ag so we'll just drop off the precision and that's just the state of agriculture at this point it's very high tech and very integrative and uh, precision will probably not need to be used as a modifier we're probably the next phase though before we give up on precision is we'll come back to what we call prescription agriculture which will be the precision application of these technologies to an individual unit, much as a prescription from your doctor is for as much you as it is about the medicine. It's for your particular ailment at the point or your particular needs medically, and we're doing the same thing for agriculture. What, what does this farm unit need, uh, or what does this food need to be produced with, to, and so it'll, it'll morph into what we call prescription agriculture, more for an individualized unit as much as for the whole uh, scale of a larger unit. Well, as with all technologies, everything has to be um, uh, considered uh, in light of your own uh, ability to apply it and use it in your own finances. So you don't just go grab something because somebody said this was what was needed. You have to evaluate it as every business does. Uh, you have to evaluate is this going to be cost effective for me uh, and number one do I even want to do it and if, you, if you're not of the mindset and you can still be a viable economic entity, then, then that's your individual decision. That is, after all, why you're an individual farmer or an individual businessman. But you don't just rush to do these things because people say they're the best or the latest. You, you have to do them from a business management standpoint. Is this right for me at the time, or should I try to work it in in two years or three years? Or do I need to go get some training myself to understand, you know what, I'm really not going to be good at this, but you know what, I need to hire somebody to do this for me. And so we're moving into that arena too, where many farmers are moving to are just saying, I'm going to manage this operation and I'm not going to try to know everything I need to know about this particular thing because you know what, there's people out there that can do that better than I can. Oh, oh, sure. You know, as you young guys uh, take over from us old gray haired duffers, sure, you, you know what, as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, Maslow told us, you know, what is a luxury to one generation becomes a necessity to the next. Uh, a generation like yours, Paul, you, you don't even think about applying some of these technologies because you grew up with them. And somebody that's my age is struggling with them because I, I never had to adapt to them. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, the generational thing will certainly make a difference. It'll be, that's why I say the precision word will probably ultimately, it's not that it's a bad word, it's just, hey, hey we're all precision, we're all high tech ag. Oh, in almost every field you're seeing it. I mean, you know, as a, I've got a friend that's truly a rocket scientist that developed a lot of the hardware and software for the space shuttle, and and he's roughly my age, a little few years younger. But he said, you know, Lo, we're going to look back one day and go, how could we allow, have allowed in the past, a 16-year-old to get a driver's license to drive a two-ton vehicle down a road with nothing but their testosterone and skill set uh, because you know uh, cars now are moving toward you know come on you don't even have to parallel park it it'll do it for you well you move to well, why can't it drive me home and the answer is the technology is there so in almost every field it'll just take us getting used to 
letting that technology do those things for us. But every field is doing it.